हेलो भिवर्स आई एम मिस्टर दिलीप कुमार पाल स्टैंड बिफोर यू विथ ए टॉपिक राम मनोहर लोहिया ऑन सोशलिज्म दिस इज फाउंड इन कोर्ट पेपर फोर्टीन ऑफ सिक्स सेमिस्टर एंड टूडेज वीडियो रिलेट्स विथ राम मनोहर लोहियास व्यू ऑन सोशलिज्म इट इज फाउंड इन कोर पेपर नंबर फोर्टीन ऑफ सिक्स सेमिस्टर बट बिफोर आई स्टार्ट माई वीडियो ऑन राम मनोहर लोहियास व्यू ऑन सोशलिज्म आई वॉन्ट टू इन्फॉर्म माई व्यूअर्स दट माई चैनल नेम नंबर इज एट द रेट दिलीप कुमार पाल नाइन थ्री सेवन फाइव इफ यूल सर्च दिस चैनल इन गूगल यूल फाइंड आज बेन एज फोर हंड्रेड फोर्टीन वीडियोज रिलेटिंग टू प्लस टू फर्स्ट इयर पोलिटिकल साइंस प्लस टू सेकेंड इयर पोलिटिकल साइंस एंड प्लस थ्री फर्स्ट सेमिस्टर टू प्लस थ्री सिक्स सेमिस्टर पोलिटिकल साइंस ऑनर्स एंड मेनी वीडियोज ऑफ environmental studies of plus 3 first semester which is common for plus 3 first semester arts commerce and science are also available i request my viewers that if you have subscribed my channel it is all right if you have not subscribed my channel please subscribe so that you will get the benefit and those of your friends who are in above class please ever them about this channel so at least some students will be benefited remember to give help to anybody is a very highest humanitarian activity and any topic you want just write my name dilip kumar pal and name of the topic in youtube you'll get both odia video and english videos so if you will get odia video be sure that its english version is also available if you will get if you will find any english video be sure that its odia version is also available let us start ram monohar lohias views on socialism what he told about socialism ram monohar lohia whose father name was hiralal and mother name was chanda devi was born on 23rd march 910 at akbarpur in uttar pradesh and died on 12th october 1967 in new delhi ram monohar lohia whose father name was hiralal and mother name was chanda devi was born on 23rd march 1910 at akbarpur in uttar pradesh and died on 12th october 1967 at new delhi he was the only socialist who wanted to introduce socialism in indian in india on the basis of indian condition ram monohar lohia was the only socialist in india who wanted to introduce socialism in india on the basis of indian conditions he did not want to introduce in india soviet type of socialism or western type of socialism he was the first in socialist who wanted to introduce socialism in india on the basis of the indian condition his idea about socialism was original idea his idea about socialism was original idea or totally new idea he delivered his ideas on socialism while presiding pancha marhi conference on socialism in madhya pradesh on may 1952 he 
he delivered his ideas about socialism while presiding Panchom Mahri conference in Uttar Pradesh on May 1952. He delivered his ideas about socialism while presiding Poncho Marhi conference in Madhya Pradesh on May 1952. So, following were the ideas of socialism. So, what ideas he had on socialism? Ram Manohar Lohia's view on socialism. He includes he included following principles in his socialism or in his socialism following principles are observed and we will discuss here as many as 11 principles he has included in his socialism. The first principle of Ram Manohar Lohia in socialism was maximum priority to equality. In his socialism, the first principle of Ram Manohar Lohia's socialism is maximum priority to equality. The first principle of Ram Manohar Lohia's socialism is that maximum priority is given to equality. He gave maximum priority to equality in his socialism. For it, he carried out Seven-fold revolution or Sapta Kranti mentioned below. In its socialism, the first principle was that he gave, he delivered maximum priority to equality. He pointed out that equality is the basic principle of socialism. And in order to promote equality, he told about seven revolution or Sapta Kranti. Seven fold revolution or Sapta Kranti. In his equality, he included seven principles. Number one, equality between men and women. He wanted to make men and women equal. For this, he wanted to give not equal opportunities to women, rather to give them preferential opportunity. In his equality, he included that there must be equality between men and women. So, in order to make men and women equal, he told about that women should be given preferential opportunities in place of equal opportunities. If women will be given extra opportunities or preferential opportunities, then, on, then only in the society, men and women will be equal. If men and women will not be equal, Socialism will not be in a real sense. The second principle of equality is abolition of equality based on color. Abolition of inequality based on color. He viewed that color of the skin cannot make one superior and beautiful. So color based inequality must be abolished. He viewed that all men are equal. On the basis of color, discrimination should not be made among the people. Those who are fair, if they will be given more favor, then those who are not fair, it is against equality. So he viewed that on the basis of color, there should not be any discrimination. If there will be discrimination, it will, it will not be socialism. Number three, elimination of equality on the basis of birth and caste. He viewed that on the basis of birth and caste, discrimination should not be made. There should not be caste feeling in society. If there will be caste feeling, if there will be discrimination on the basis of caste and birth, real socialism cannot be established. So point three, he viewed that, he viewed that caste is a disease in the Indian society. 
he viewed that it is a single cause of submission to foreign rule he he wanted to abolish caste feeling and to end caste feeling in society and educational institutions there will be common school for all castes he viewed that to promote equality among people there should not be caste feeling he viewed that caste is a disease in the in the in the indian society there should not be discrimination among people on the basis of caste and birth if there will be discrimination among people on the basis of caste and birth there will be no real socialism then the fourth principle natural freedom by national freedom national freedom by ending foreign rule he viewed that nothing energized people so much as their country nation people land of father and mother he wanted to end imperialism or foreign rule for equality he viewed that to make equality in the society to establish equality in society there should not be foreign rule there should not be imperialism if there will be imperialism or if there will be foreign domination in a country there will not be equality if there will be no equality there will be no socialism fifth principle of equality is that priority to increase economic strength for equality he gave priority to increase economic strength for equality for economic equality he stressed for reasonable wages adequate employment adequate leisure economic rights he viewed that to establish equality in the society there should be economic equality people will be given adequate wages they will be given employment they will be given different type of right economic rights so that there will be economic equality and equality so unless people unless the financial condition of people will be better equality will be a dream then the sixth one is protection of privacy of people from encroachments he viewed that in equality there is another principle is that privacy of people must be maintained from encroachments by protection of privacy people will feel better no encroachment will be made he viewed that in order to establish equality in society there must be privacy of people if there will be privacy of people equality will be established if privacy of people will not be maintained equality will not be established and ultimately socialism cannot be established finally the seventh principle of equality is that abolition of armaments abolition of armaments armed ammunition must be abolished why he viewed that main needs weapon for what he viewed that main needs weapon either to grab either to grab or take what others have or to hold what they possess by weapons there is chance for foreign invasion for netek so armament armament must be abolished he viewed that there must be abolition of armaments because if there will be armaments then there will be chance of foreign attack so if armaments will be abolished there will not be chance of foreign attack and people will remain peaceful in their country so in order to establish equality he told about abolition of armaments so the first principle of ram monor lohia concept of socialism is that he delivered maximum emphasis to equality and in order to promote equality he carried out seven fold revolution or sapta kranti then the second principle of socialism of ram monor loya was four pillars of state 
he gave priority to decentralization of power among four pillars of state like central government state government district units and village units by which problems of different level will be solved he told about that in socialism there must be four pillars it means power will not be centralized rather power should be decentralized among four pillars central government state government district unit and village units power should be shared among these four pillars important powers will be given to central government and a less important power will be given to state government and so on so important power will be given to the central government a less important power will be given to state governments more important power will be given to central government a less important power will be given to state government again a, again a less important power will be given to district district units again a less important power will be given to the village units so power should be decentralized otherwise socialism will be a dream then the third principle of socialism of ram manohar loya was foreign policy as a mean to fight against oppression and inequality he viewed that foreign policy will be prepared in such a manner that it will fight against oppression and inequalities he wanted to follow that type of foreign policy for india he advised that india should follow that type of foreign policy where it will keep it away from american bloc and soviet bloc it will not be in american bloc or in soviet bloc it will keep itself away from american bloc and soviet bloc he wanted to form a third bloc which will fight for freedom peace progress of millions of oppressed people in the world third camp must not be an umpire rather participators in international events he viewed that the foreign policy of india should be not to join in american bloc or to soviet bloc rather india should be in a third bloc which will fight for the oppressed people of the world and the third bloc or third camp will not be a will not be an umpire rather it will be the participator for world international events if indian foreign policy will not be prepared like this there will be no true socialism in india then the fourth principle of his socialism was formation of world parliament and government he wanted to form a world parliament or world government by taking representatives of all people which will solve problems of people of the world he wanted to form a world government or and parliament by taking representatives of all nations to enforce peace common problems and miseries of the world every country should contribute according to its capacity and being given according to its need he wanted that by taking representatives of all nations a world government a world parliament will be formed who will fight who will fight for peace in the world equality in the world to end miseries in the world then the fourth principle the fifth principle of ram manohar loya socialism was adoption of planning to reconstruct national economy he wanted to adopt planning for the development of people and not for any class he wanted to introduce planning in india by planning there will be development of people and not development of any class if there will be no planning there will be no socialism in india then his sixth principle priority to agriculture for national development he gave his view about agriculture as a mean for nations nations development in following way he viewed that for the development of the country agriculture must be given priority so he pointed out that 
Agriculture will be given priority in which manner? Number one, reclamation of wasteland. If it means wasteland must be converted into agricultural land. He viewed that agriculture must be given priority. By taking following steps, agriculture will play an important role. Number one, reclamation of wasteland. Wastelands or lands which are not cultivated, they must be cultivated. By this, agricultural production will be increased. Number two, small unit technology. It means small scale industries will be given priority where local people will be employed and local raw materials will be utilized. By this, industries will come to people and people will not go to industry in cities. If you hear that, small scale industries will have to be established. If small scale industries will be established, local people will be employed, local raw materials will be utilized. So if small scale industries will be established, industries will come to people and people will not go to industry in cities. So he gave priority to small scale industry. Number three, equal distribution of land. The third principle relating to agriculture is equal distribution of land. Landlordism should be abolished and equal distribution of land must be made. If you that, landlordism, Jamidar system should be abolished. And there should be and there should be equal distribution of land. By this, agriculture can, can play an important role. Then food army. Food army must be formed by taking landless farmers to convert barren land to agricultural land and promote irrigational facility. In order to convert barren land or unutilized agricultural land. Food army must be formed by taking landless farmers who will convert barren lands into agricultural land and they will promote irrigational facilities. By this, agricultural production will be increased. If agricultural production will be, will be increased, it will boost national development. Then, abolition of land revenue. As agriculture is a profitless work, so land revenue must be abolished. He viewed that. Agriculture is a profitless work. So, land revenue must not be collected from the farmers. Then, fifth principle, how agriculture plays an important role. Priority to small and medium scale irrigation facility. It will increase production. He pointed out that. Priority should be given to small and medium scale irrigation facilities. By this, agricultural production will increase. So, he viewed that agriculture is a medium for national development. It will be a medium, medium of national development where these six steps will be taken. Then, another principle of socialism of Ram Manohar Loya was language issue he wanted to abolish english language and to make hindi as a common language he wanted to abolish english language and make hindi as a common language of india because english is a foreign language language of privileged rich people barrier between privileged and unprivileged people Create a slavish mentality among people that only English can lead them to progress and knowledge. He wanted to abolish English language from India because English language is a foreign language. It is a language of privileged class, rich class. It is a barrier between rich class and poor class. So if English language will be abolished, people will talk in Hindi, which is a common language, by this there will be equality. 
then eighth principle of his sociology is uniform pattern of education he wanted uniform pattern of education that is uniform pay scale for all teachers uniform book for all students and one type of school for all caste and all people he wanted an uniform educational system in the country one type of salary to teacher one type of books for students and one type of school for people of all castes so by this there will be equality and there will be socialism then ninth principle of socialism is stress to reduce gap between haves and have not he stressed to reduce the gap between the rich and poor otherwise socialism cannot be established then the last principle or the tenth tenth principle of socialism tenth principle of socialism was a decent standard of living for all he wanted to promote a good living conditions for the people so ram monor loyas socialism is the plus of all the ten important principles and it was his original idea then we we'll discuss some points to note what points we have to note in may 1934 he along with jayaprakash narayan mino masani acharya narendra dev achyut patwardhan ashok mehta jm joshi sampurna anand kamala devi chatrapadhyay for congress socialist party then he told about dijo d d v i j a he told about dijo or twice born and he regarded b for b for brahmin k for khatriya b for vaishya they are two born persons but sudras are not two born persons he pointed out that people of higher caste like brahmin khatriya vaishyas they are twice born and sudras are not twice born because twice born means first born physically from parents whenever a baby will born from parents it is physically born it is one born then secondly he is born spiritually well educated so dwija means twice born brahmin khatriya vaishya they are twice born because first of all they will born physically from parents it is one born what is one birth again whenever they will be given spiritual education there will be second birth so but sudras are not sudras but sudras are not twice born so in this video we discussed ram monohar loyas view on socialism in socialism 10 principles are found if this 10 principles will be in the society there will be a real socialism thank you viewers have a good day thank you